wherever you are, if you wouldn't mind just joining me uh, in some prayer. Father, we are so grateful for this Sunday session. We are so grateful uh, for February 28th. We're so grateful um, for Black History Month. We're so grateful for the contributions um, uh, that black, black people have made uh, uh, to this country, in this country. And while we are still yet fighting for that recognition, fighting um, uh, for that due respect, Father, I'm grateful uh, uh, for what my ancestors have, have done um, on both sides, both sides of my ethnicity. I'm so grateful um, uh, uh, to be in a place where we can celebrate, where we can be celebrated. Lord, it may not be perfect, uh, uh, but I still contend, I still contend um, uh, that the U.S. Is, is, is really one of the best places to live. And, and I am grateful that this is where I find my home. I'm grateful that I can cry out to Jesus without fear of reprisal, without fear of persecution, without fear of imprisonment or death. I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful, Father, for this opportunity to connect once again with your people, with your special people. I pray, Lord, that the words that I have would be edification, that would be a blessing, that the words that I have would pour out, that they would be a healing balm, not because that they are my words, Lord, but because I speak what you have for your people at such a time as this. Give us a heart to hear. Give us a mind to be open. Let your anointing flow free. Let it flow fresh upon your people. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. God bless you, Brother Jermaine. Jermaine Easterlin up in Tacoma, Washington. Bless you, man. Good to have you on with us. So grateful that you're able to, to join us. So as I said, um, the announcements are really going to flow into um, uh, today's words. So I want to take some time. Um, it's important. I pray that you hang in there with me, as I always say, but this is important. Um, as we go into uh, next month and um, what we are, are, are setting out to do as a ministry, what we're setting out to do um, as, a, as a work for the Lord. And so we announced it last week. I want to bring my volume down, bring my energy down a little bit. I know I'm, I might be yelling a little bit, so let me let me bring it down for a little bit. Um, we announced last week that we wanted to go into our first corporate pr uh, fast consecration and prayer. And we wanted to take the month of March leading up to Resurrection Sunday, Easter Sunday, to do our, fa our first corporate fast consecration and prayer. And, and what does that look like? And what is that all about? And I, and I committed to you that this week we would have more information. Um, we have put up an infographic. We have put up an infographic um, across all of our platforms. It's not up on the website just yet. We'll be getting that up um, a little bit later uh, this afternoon, along with Children's Church. We did do Children's Church this morning. We just didn't have a chance to post it. Um, so those things will be up on the website um, a little bit later today. Uh, but we put together an infographic to help you keep uh, track with what we're doing uh, this coming month. So we're starting next Sunday. So you still have this week to, to prep and prepare. And um, the teaching today will lead into helping you to prep and prepare for uh, going into the fast, going into the fast, the consecration. Uh, in the prayer for the month of March. So we're starting the first full week of March. So not this week, uh, uh, but uh, March 7th. So we're going to be going from March 7th through April 3rd. March 7th through April 3rd, four full weeks of fasting, prayer, and consecration. The first week is what we're calling a media fast. Um, and, and not just social media, but media in general, where we're going to ask you to give up um, all of your entertainment, uh, uh, video games, social media, shows, movies, um, uh, uh, any kind of content uh, that isn't um, uh, directly glorifying God. I mean, we're talking about, you know, anything that isn't um, uh, worship music, that isn't some sort of praise music. Um, you know, gospel, Christian contemporary, gospel rap, anything that's not that. We're asking you to give that up for the first week, that first week being March 7th 
through the 13th. So that's our media fast. Um, you can certainly get on social media. We need you to get on social media to uh, participate in church services because we, you know, we do our church services through social media. Um, so you're certainly encouraged to continue to um, uh, listen to those uh, podcasts where you're doing Bible studies and um, and those sorts of things. Uh, if you're listening to other preaching, uh, that's certainly okay. But any kind of entertainment, um, uh, you know, uh, there should be no Netflix uh, really during this time. There shouldn't be any uh, Amazon Prime during this time uh, for that first week. Um, so that that's week number one. What we're going to be praying for during week number one is we're praying for God's people globally and our local church. So we're praying for the body of Christ, both globally, the big body of Christ, but we're also playing, praying for my connected church. So we're praying for the body globally, but we're also praying for our local church during that first week. So that's week number one. Week number two, we're going to take it a step further, and we're going to go with no sugar, no added sugar. So, you know, you're not um, pulling back a whole lot on the meal front at this point, um, but what we're asking you to do is to fast from any added sugar, any sweetener whatsoever. Fresh fruit is okay. Frozen fruit is okay, but we don't want you eating anything that's got sugar added. So that you got to read those ingredients. You got to read them carefully. Sugar is in everything, family. Sugar is in everything. So you really want to read those, those uh, ingredients very, clear, uh, very carefully in that second week, the March 14th through the 20th, we're removing any added sugar. Okay, now, um, as a, well, let me get through the whole thing and then I'll explain um, the two approaches that we can take. So there, there, are, there are options um, even within the fast because I know people are coming from different places. So we'll still provide some clarity as we go, but I want to just get through the mechanics first. So that's week number two. We're praying for our leaders, uh, uh, elected leaders, leaders in our careers, um, and leaders in our church. So we're praying for leadership week number two, uh, government, uh, professional, and church. So that's the 14th through the 20th. So no added sugar, praying for leadership. Week number three, um, in this one, we will really go into a lot of detail. We'll actually do a bit of a, uh, of a teaching on it um, this Thursday as part of Bible study as we wrap up um, the, the big topic, God is speaking, are you listening? Um, we're going to be teaching on uh, uh, wrapping that session up as we teach on um, week three, which is going to be the Daniel fast. So week three is the Daniel fast. And, and again, we'll, we'll get into it in more detail, but essentially the Daniel fast comes from what Daniel requested to eat in the book of Daniel. Chapter three, I believe it was when Daniel, um, along with some of the other um, young, uh, up-and-coming um, leaders, young men uh, that were taken out of Israel into Babylonian captivity, and they were actually taken to the palace to live in the palace, to live with the king, and to learn about Babylonian culture, specifically Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah um, uh, denied the king's meat. Uh, they denied the king's diet and made a specific request for what they wanted to eat. And so from that, we get the Daniel fast. The Daniel fast consists largely of um, uh, fruits and vegetables. That, that's largely what the Daniel fast consists of. Um, nothing canned. Uh, so for the Daniel fast, we're looking for fresh or frozen fruits and vegetables, but there are also some other things. You can have um, certain kinds of brown rice. You can have quinoa. Um, certain kinds of legumes, beans, um, but again, we're trying to stay away from anything in a can. So even if you were going to get your beans, you'd want to get your beans dried in a bag um, that you had to boil and, and, and prepare yourself. So um, again, more detail to come on that, but that's week number three. God bless you, Miss Queen. I'm so grateful to have you in with us. So great to see you again this Sunday. 
Um, so that's week three. So week three is the Daniel fast and we're praying for um, our network. So we're praying for those that are close to us um, within our communities, those that are close to us within our careers and those that are close to us within our family. So we're praying for our personal network. So the circle is starting to get a little closer, right? We started kind of globally, the global church, our local church, then we started to funnel down and we're looking at leaders. Now we're bringing it a little bit closer. We're looking at our network, our personal networks, our professional networks in um, the third week of prayer and consecration. And then we're gonna finish it. We're gonna finish it up with what's called a complete fast or a total fast. And so um, the fourth week, that's March 28th through April 3rd, we're gonna break it up into two halves. So the first part, um, uh, the first five days, Monday through Thursday, uh, we're gonna do a complete fast. So uh, uh, no food whatsoever, except for one meal a day. You'll get one meal a day um, during that final uh, uh, during that final week during those first four days uh, or first five days rather so I'm sorry first yeah first uh, four days <laughs> can't keep track first four days Monday through Thursday one meal a day and you are encouraged to um, stick to the Daniel fast protocols for that one meal um, we are strongly encouraging you to maintain the Daniel fast for that one meal on the fourth week, Monday through Thursday. Um, and then the last two days, Friday and Saturday, uh, we're going to go without any food um, for that 48 hours. Um, so Friday and Saturday, no food. Uh, and of course, water throughout. So water throughout Monday through Thursday with your one meal and then certainly water um, throughout the 48 hours uh, where we're not going to eat anything. Um, where we're going to go Thursday and Friday with no food whatsoever. Okay. Um, and uh, what we're doing for that final week is we're bringing it now very intimate. And for that final week, we are praying for ourselves. You're praying for your individual self and you're praying for your purpose and your calling to be fulfilled both in and outside of the church. That's what we're doing for week four, right? So week four is a complete fast where we're doing one meal a day for the first four days, Monday through Thursday. And then for the last two days of that week, again, that week being April, uh, March 28th through April 3rd, taking us right up to Resurrection Sunday, um, that, sat, uh, that Friday and Saturday, we're gonna have no food, uh, water only, um, of those final two days. Okay. So let's get into the teaching a little bit. Let's, let's uh, uh, peel back a little bit what God is saying and provide some clarification. So a couple points of clarification. Point number one, any fast should be entered in anytime you're, if in particular when we're giving up food, should be entered in based on your level of faith, and your uh, physical ability to, to maintain, to adhere to the standards of the fast. And if you need to consult your physician, if you need to consult uh, your PCP, um, a doctor or a specialist, uh, we need you to do that. We need you to do that. We, we, we are not recommending anyone put themselves in a position where through their faith and through their physicality, they're going to have a negative experience. What do I mean by that? Well, let, let's, let's go to scripture. Let's go to scripture and, 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 and take this thing a little bit further. So what is fasting? Fasting is giving up voluntarily. I think that's important to recognize too. Now, the term fasting gets used a lot. It gets used in the medical community all the time. Your doctors may tell you to fast because you've got a blood test coming up. Your doctors may tell you to fast um, uh, because uh, uh, they're going to be running some tests. Perhaps you have uh, surgery coming up, um, uh, you know, heaven forbid, uh, but you may have a surgery, a procedure coming up. And so they need your stomach to be empty. And so your doctors will tell you to fast. And essentially what they're just telling you to do is to give up food for a certain period of time. You can have clear liquids but they're telling you to give up food, um, other beverages, so that your stomach is as empty as possible, 
so that there's no interaction with the anesthesia or anything like that. Um, so fasting does have some very practical applications. Um, fasting gets used a lot um, in fitness training. Uh, you'll see it a lot um, in, in wellness and fitness articles and, and trainers. Um, they'll use the term intermittent fasting uh, quite a bit. And, and so, you know, they'll suggest you go on a 12 hour fast, a 14 hour fast, um, where you stop eating at, you know, uh, five o'clock, six o'clock in the evening, and you don't eat again until, you know, eight o'clock the following morning. An intermittent fast, and then periodically they'll recommend that you mix in like a 24 hour fast with that, where you, you know, you don't eat for the whole day and you're just having water and the idea is that it, it, it does serve to do some cleansing. Um, it does serve to kind of rid your body because your body is then going to metabolize um, stored fat that, that has come from um, other things that you've eaten that it maybe hadn't processed. It might've been holding on to uh, for a time where you didn't have a lot of um, uh, excess nutrient coming in. And so your body will start to uh, ideally metabolize those stored fats. And so that's a way to kind of, um, you know, bring your, 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 your um, uh, body mass index down um, and, and start to, um, and potentially improve your, your fitness and your overall wellness. So fasting, that term gets used a lot outside of kind of faith circles, religious circles, um, uh, church circles. What we are talking about in the fasting um, that we are engaged in is not simply giving something up. So the term is this idea that you give up something your body needs for the purpose. Here's the, the kind of the Christian caveat, the religious caveat. Obviously, Christians are not the only ones that fast for spiritual purpose. Um, Islam's fast for um, a month, the month of Ramadan, um, uh, which is uh, their high um, holy period. Uh, and, and so fasting does have some very spiritual implications. And so the definition, the term fasting has to do with giving something up your body needs for the purpose, for the purpose of growing closer with the Lord. This is the idea. The idea is that, um, and Paul talked about it quite a bit. Um, uh, Paul used the expression that he was trying to die daily to his flesh. If you think about the fact that your, your life, our lives is a scale and it is natural and it is spiritual. And so the more we feed the natural, the, the more our lives lean towards natural things, towards material things. Uh, uh, and we recognize that while we live in our, in our natural body, we want to emphasize more spirituality. We want to emphasize more of the things that can't be seen, more spiritual and less natural. God tells us to put our minds on things that are above. Paul says in Philippians, uh, whatsoever things are good and lovely and honest and of a good report, think on these things that we are trying to transform our mind. <coughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Uh, you know, uh, my body is a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable uh, uh, unto the Lord of God. And so I want to um, be transformed by the renewing of my mind uh, uh, that I can do what is that, what is good and acceptable, the perfect will of God. I need to transform my mind. And so I transform my mind by thinking more about and putting more emphasis and putting more energy on things above. How do I do that while living in a natural body? How do I do that while existing in a natural world? One of the ways that I do that is I feed the material, I feed the natural less and give more to the spiritual. And so in fasting, in the fast that we're going to embark on, where we are going to be asking God to speak as God is speaking to us. So part of what we've been wrestling with for the last several weeks is God is speaking. Are you listening? How can we hear God if we are more focused on the natural? So part of are you listening has to do with 
Have you invested the right amount of effort, energy, and time to increase the spiritual so that you aren't so dependent on the natural? Charles, how do I hear God's voice? How do I know if God is speaking? Well, well, part of uh, the, the solution to that, part of the answer to that is put yourself in a position where you're more attuned to the spirit than the natural where you're more attuned to spirit than nature. How do I get there? By putting more in the spiritual column than in the natural column. So that means when we take from the natural column, when we go on this fast, we are then going to add to the spirit. We're not just giving up food. We're not just giving up entertainment. We're not just giving up sugar. We're giving those things up, but then we're adding to the spirit. So the time you would be spending eating a meal, the time you would be spending binging a show, the time you would be spending listening to other kinds of music while you're doing other things, you're going to then replace that with things above, with things of God. So instead of binging a show, I listen to more preaching. Instead of listening to hip hop, I listen to gospel rap. Instead of listening to r and B, I I listen to gospel. Instead of listening to rock, I listen to Christian contemporary music. I'm taking stuff out of the natural column and I'm putting it in the spiritual column. Fasting is giving up what our body needs for the purpose of getting closer to God. And I'm going to get closer to God. I'm going to hear what God is saying to me by taking from the natural and putting in the spiritual. Where do we see, how do we see fasting being used in scripture? We see fasting being used in a couple different ways, a couple different categories. So first and foremost, we see fasting used as a response to something negative that's happened. Go to Nehemiah. Go to Nehemiah chapter 1, and we're looking at, and I already have it saved. Um, I'll say it out loud to you, but I have the scripture here, so I'm just going to go ahead and read it. Um, Nehemiah chapter 1, verses 3 through 6. And they said to me, the remnant there in the province who had survived the exile is in great trouble and shame. The wall of Jerusalem is broken down and its gates are destroyed by fire. As soon as I heard these words, I sat down and wept and mourned for days. And I continued fasting and praying before the God of heaven. And I said, O Lord, God of heaven, the great and awesome God who keeps covenant and steadfast love with those who love him and keep his commandments, let your ear be attentive to me and your eyes open to hear the prayer of your servant for now I pray before you day and night for the people of Israel, your servants, confessing the sins of the people of Israel, which, ha which we have sinned against you. Even I and my father's house have sinned. Nehemiah as a prophet um, uh, uh, and, and, and a leader um, that is in exile. He's in Babylon. He's actually the king's cup bearer. He's the wine taster. He's the cup bearer. So he would bring the king, the king of Persia in this case, uh, his cup. And there are Israelites that remember we talked about last week and we talked about how Jeremiah was preparing Israel for exile and that Jeremiah prophesied and said it's going to be better for those Israelites that go to Babylon in exile because they're going to plant, vine plant vineyards and they're going to raise families and, and they're going to learn to endure in the exile. But for those Israelites that are going to be obstinate and try to stay behind or that go to Egypt, they're going to suffer more. This is what Nehemiah is reflecting on. Nehemiah is interceding now for those Israelites that stayed behind in Israel because the wall has fallen down. Uh, uh, there is trouble in the land. There is death and, and disease and mess. And so Nehemiah, who's an Israelite, in Babylon is interceding and praying on behalf of the Israelites that are still in Jerusalem. 
and he fasts. And notice that as he's fasting, in the last uh, of verse 6 there, we see um, confessing the sins of the people of Israel, which we have sinned against you, even I and my father's house have sinned. And so part of Nehemiah's fast is that confession. Now, Nehemiah is fasting in response to negative events that happen. We see this again in Esther. Esther, you remember Queen Esther. Uh, um, uh, uh, the king of Persia was looking for a new bride because his uh, first wife would not um, show herself off. She would not shame herself uh, the way that he wanted. And so he searches for a new bride. And Esther, the Israelite, um, is chosen. And so in chapter 4, verses 1 through 3, when Mordecai learned all that had been done, Mordecai tore his clothes, put on sackcloth and ashes, and went out into the midst of the city, and he cried out with a loud and bitter cry. He went up to the entrance of the king's gate, for no one was allowed to enter the king's gate clothed in sackcloth. And in every province, wherever the king's command and his decree reached, there was great mourning among the Jews with fasting and weeping and lamenting, and many of them lay in sackcloth and ashes. And so here, a, a law is passed. And this is, you know what, this is powerful. I hadn't even, God is making a connection for me that I did not get when I was first preparing for today's message. So a law is made. It's a wicked law. The king was tricked by his right man, Haman. Haman despises the Jews. Mordecai will not bow to Haman. Haman takes it personal and wants to not only kill Mordecai, he wants to kill all of Mordecai's people, the Jews, because the Jews only worship God. Two entities that the Jews will bow to. They will bow to the king because the king was God's man placed over them and they bow to God. Haman is not the king. Haman might be the king's right hand. The king might say that when you don't see me, you see Haman, you might as well see me. But for the Jews, that ain't good enough. We're bowing to the king and we're bowing to God and that's it. And so because the Jews don't bow to Haman, specifically because Mordecai will not bow to Haman, uh, Haman convinces the king to write this wicked law that is going to give him the ability to kill all the Jews. Many Christians believe today that legislation has been passed that's going to make it difficult to be a Christian. They feel like recent legislation that has been passed as an assault on Christianity. I haven't read the legislation. I can't speak to it specifically in terms of what's in it, what it says, what it's meant to do. What I can speak to is I wonder how many Christians, as opposed to throwing their arms up and, 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 and having a fit and, and, and running to social media and condemning anyone that supports the legislation and talking about how wicked the legislation, legislation is. I wonder how many Christians called for a fast if this legislation is truly an assault on our faith, if it's truly an assault on Christianity. I wonder how many Christian groups, I wonder how many churches, I wonder how many Christian assemblies got together and said, let's fast and ask God. God to intercede on behalf of this legislation. How many Christians have approached COVID through fast and prayer? I'm going to raise my hand and say, I did not. I did not. I know some churches that did. I know some churches that when the pandemic started to really heat up, I'm aware of some churches that did go on a prayer and a consecration and a fast seeking God's intercession the same way the Israelites did when Haman passed this wicked legislation. The same way that Nehemiah did when, when the walls of Jerusalem were falling down and there was death all around, there were some Israelites that chose to fast. Charles, is this the right time to fast given that things are seemingly getting better? Absolutely, because what did I tell you last week? God is speaking. Are you listening? Are you listening, America? 
we think that we're getting out of this thing because we got a couple vaccines going, because cases are going down, because incidences of infection are decreasing. We feel like we're coming through this thing. What happened when we thought things were getting better over the summer? We relaxed, we took a, a step back, we let our guard down in the fall and the winter were the worst that we've experienced. Yes, now is the right time to go on the fast. Now is the time that God is calling Connected Church to go on a fast to get closer with each other and to get closer with God. God is speaking. Are you listening, even in tragedy, even in times of difficulty? How can we look at what's happening in the world? How can we look at what's happening in our country and conclude anything other than God is speaking? Texas and the Southwest experienced some of the coldest weather on record, pipes bursting, people freezing, not having enough food, not having any way to stay warm, not having adequate protection. How can we look at something like that in the midst of this pandemic that's still going on, in the midst of still political infighting, in the midst of racial incivility? How can we look at things like that and not say that God isn't speaking? It is the fool that says in his heart, at this point in time, it's all chance. You want to chalk it up to climate change? I'll, I'll get with you on that. I'll say that part of what Texas experienced is the result of some of the seeds of climate change that had been sown for years. But why now? Timing is everything, family. God is speaking, America. God is speaking, Connected Church. Are we listening? And so Israel went on a fast in times of adversity. Fasting was also used when we were seeking intercession. Daniel chapter 6, verse 18. Daniel chapter 6, verse 18. Then the king went to his palace and spent the night fasting. This is a, a, a pagan king, y'all. This is a pagan king that was once again tricked by his inner circle to pass a law that then resulted in his good friend Daniel having to be thrown into the lion's den. God bless you, Brother Earl. Good to see you, sir. Welcome in. Uh, and so the king, who's supposedly a pagan king, uh, 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 believing in, in multiple gods, fasts on behalf of Daniel because he knows that Daniel was a good man, because he knows that Daniel was a godly man, because he knows Daniel had no business being thrown into the lion's den, but he got tricked to pass this legislation, and so he has to follow through. And so the king fasted on behalf of Daniel while Daniel slept in the lion's den that Daniel would not be consumed. Fasting is also used as an expression of repentance. Staying in Daniel, Daniel chapter 9, verses 3 through 10. Then I turned my face to the Lord, this is Daniel speaking, seeking him by prayer and pleas for mercy with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. ashes. I prayed to the Lord, my God, and made confession, saying, O oh Lord, the great and awesome God, who keeps covenant and steadfast love with those who love him and keep his commandments, we have sinned and done wrong and acted wickedly and rebelled, turning aside from your commandments and rules. We have not listened to your servants, the prophets who spoke in your name, to our kings and our princes and our fathers, and to all the people of the land. To you, O oh Lord, belongs righteousness, but to us open shame, as at this day to the men of Judah, to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, to all of Israel who are near and those who are far away, and all the lands to which you have driven them because of the treachery that we have, they have committed against you to us, O oh Lord, belongs open shame to our kings, to our princes, to our fathers, because we have sinned against you. 
to the Lord our God belong mercy and forgiveness, for we have rebelled against you and have not opened the voice of the Lord our God by walking in his laws, which he set before us by his servants, the prophets. I turned my face to God, seeking him in prayer, pleas for mercy, with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. ashes. Family, fasting is a tool of repentance. Fasting is a way to express to God in sincerest forms how we've been detoured, how we've missed God's word, God's voice, God's opportunity, God's calling. God is speaking. Are you listening? And for some of us, the answer has been no. But thank God for mercy, it's not too late. We are going to go on this consecration to express to God how sincere we want to hear from our Lord. This fasting is not about simply giving up. The fast is about giving up for the purpose of getting closer. We deduct from the material, we add to the immaterial so that we lose the natural and gain the spiritual. What profit does it do a man to gain the natural world and lose his eternal soul. God is speaking, family. Are you listening? And finally, fasting is a tool that's used for guidance, for preparation, and to get a word from the Lord. Matthew, we're in the New Testament, first book of the New Testament, Matthew chapter 4. We're looking at verses 1 and 2. Then Jesus was led up by the same spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And after fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. Jesus fasted 40 days and nights in the wilderness while being tempted of the enemy right before he begins his open ministry. Jesus was preparing for what was to come. Moses fasts for 40 days at the top of Sinai while he's getting the law, preparing to bring the law to the children of Israel, preparing to, preparing to organize Israel to be a government run and centered around God and God's word and God's law. Moses spent 40 days fasting in the presence of God getting this law, preparing to build a nation for God. Acts chapter 13. Acts chapter 13, verses 1 through 3. Now there were in the church at Antioch prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, who, were called, who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manan, a lifelong friend of Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then, after fasting and prayer, they laid their hands on them and sent them off. I don't say this, uh, family, to, to pat myself on the back. I certainly do not do it for that reason. There was a season in my life where I fasted quite a bit. I fasted quite a bit. Um, it was regular. I fasted. Um, I did a complete fast at least one day a week, and there were certainly occasions where I went on more extended fasts where I was doing one meal a day for several days. And then I stopped for a while. No particular reason. I, I, I'm not going to say that, that I was necessarily called to stop or anything like that. I just stopped. I just stopped. Not, not, not anything deeper than that. What I knew, though, was as I was preparing to launch this work, 
as I was preparing to, to set down this path of building my connected church, of, of establishing um, an all digital church, a completely virtual church, I went on a three day complete fast um, where I had no food and as little water as possible. I was, I was sipping water periodically. Why did I do that? I, I don't share that with you. I'm all so, it, I don't, no, that's not the point. I did that because I understood from experience in God's word, if you're going to start a work, if you're going to start something commissioned by God, you want to start completely empty to flesh and full in the spirit. You cannot do the work of the Lord full in the natural man and weak in the spiritual man. It cannot be done. And, and so I went on that fast and I have not fasted since. I have not. It's, it, it's you know, been eight months and I have not fasted since. And as I said, it was, it was years probably, certainly a couple of years um, uh, uh, since I had done any sort of complete fat. Now I had done Daniel fasts and media fasts and those sorts of things um, as identified um, with the ministry where we were previously, I certainly participated in those um, a corporate fast, but not a complete, you know, no food um, uh, uh, for multiple, you know, for, for, for consecutive days type of thing. I hadn't done that in, in years. God is, is moving Connected Church to the next phase of our work, family. God is moving Connected Church to the next phase of what we've been called to do as we begin to bring today's message, today's service to a close and, and prepare to go into next week. And so the reason why we are going on this fast is one, because Resurrection Sunday is coming up and that is our Super Bowl. Th that is our new year. Resurrection Sunday in the Christian church is our big day. It is the reason why we exist. We are Christians today because Christ rose from the grave. There, 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 is no, there, there is no one and one A. It's not the resurrection and the miracles. It's not the resurrection and um, uh, uh, the discipleship. It's not the resurrection and it is the resurrection. We are Christians today because Jesus Christ died on a cross and three days later got up from the grave, rolled away the stone and witnessed to his own great miracle for another 40 days before he ascended back into glory to be with his father. We are Christians because of the resurrection. We are going on this fast to prepare for the celebration of the resurrection. We are also going on this fast because God is taking Connected Church into the next phase of our development. God is taking Connected Church into the next phase of our development. And so why we are ending our month of prayer and consecration with a week of praying that God would lead us to, reveal to us, help us to see what our professional calling is and what our calling in the church, and many times there is overlap, is because this ministry is going to a place where we are going to need more from each other. You're going to need more from me, and I'm going to need more from you. Because God is calling us to move beyond the convenience of being able to open up our phone and consume some content for 45 minutes, an hour, a, a once a week on a Sunday, and then to scroll out of service and scroll into whatever the next thing is that we want to do and sort of check off, all right, I did my church, I did my godly responsibility for the week. God is calling Connected Church to go to the next phase. 
in this month of prayer, of consecration and fast, is going to prepare us to do that. As we go into next Sunday, where we're going to be starting things off, so when we come back uh, for Sunday sessions next Sunday, Sunday morning will begin our media fast. Our media fast will begin Sunday morning. What I'm going to encourage you to do for this week is begin to prepare yourself physically, mentally for the month of consecration. I mentioned earlier, I'm going to say it again especially if you are someone, uh, if you're a diabetic, if you're someone that has other dietary challenges, I'm gonna need you to consult, consult with your doctor, with your physician, particularly when we get into the later weeks where we start to restrict your food, where we start to restrict what you can consume. I need you to get clarity through faith and through physical allowance. If your faith is such that you are going to have difficulty adhering to everything, do not put yourself in a position for failure. Now, what I mean by that is if you notice the fast builds. So there's two approaches that we can take. The first approach is that you can look at each week in isolation. And so week number one is a media fast, which means, you know, you can pretty much maintain the diet, the eating habits that, that you have been utilizing earlier. We certainly want to encourage healthy eating habits. Uh, that is regardless of a fast or any sort. Um, but you don't have to do a lot to, to alter your eating habits for week one, because week one is all about the content that we consume. Week two is where we start to impact our eating habits. Now, your option for the fast is to look at each week in isolation. So week one, you do the media fast, and, and that's what you do. Week two, you do the sugar fast, but you can go back to consuming the media that you're used to consuming. And so what you're focusing on week two is the sugar fast, where you're restricting, eliminating any sugar added, but you, you, you're going back to consuming some of the uh, entertainment that you might normally do um, because we've moved past that. Week three would be the Daniel fast. So again, you know, sort of you could do your media thing, um, uh, but, you know, we're, we're now into the Daniel fast. And then week four, again, is, is the complete fast. So that, that, that is one approach is you can just look at each week kind of in isolation. The other approach is, is the way that I wrote it and the way that I'm going to be implementing it is that it, it builds from week to week. So I'm not necessarily adding back in what I fasted the week previously. So week one, I'm going to do my media fast. Week two, I'm going to remove sugar, but I'm not going to add back in a lot of media. I, I, I may spend a little bit more time on social media um, engaging and, and doing some other things to continue to sort of build the brand of the ministry that I won't be doing much of in week one, but I'm not going to then in week two where I'm giving up sugar, then go back to binging all my shows and doing all my video games and, and all of that. No, I'm going to, I'm going to work very hard through the month to restrict my entertainment through the duration of the fast and consecration. That's the approach that I'm taking. I need each of us to put ourselves in position where we have a successful experience. And if your faith is such that, that giving up too much all at once is going to be overwhelming and over uh, ultimately leave you flat, please, ma'am, please, sir, please, bruh, please, sis, do not set yourself up for failure. Put yourself in a position where you can have a successful experience. That's why we broke it down this way. That's why we took it week to week. So that if you need to add something back in that you took out the previous week so that you can focus on what we're giving up for that week, then do that. By all means, do that. And if consuming some other media is going to help you to, to focus on 
the food that you're giving up, then that's fine. But remember that as we are giving up things, we're also adding to our spiritual time. So as I'm giving up my media, as I'm giving up my food and, and slowly working, working my way up to a total fast where I'm not consuming any food at all, all of that extra time that I have, I'm reading my Bible, I'm listening to devotions, I'm listening to preaching, I'm listening to uh, 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 praise and worship music, I'm reading, and I'm praying, I'm meditating, I'm spending time with the Lord. I'm listening for God's voice. More to come on this throughout the week. Um, we will be using all of our uh, social media leading up to the fast. Um, we will still continue to put things on the website. Um, we're we're going to have resources for you, especially when it comes to the Daniel fast. I found a great website that I'm going to put um, on the church's uh, Facebook page. Uh, we'll also put it uh, I'll put a link up on the website as well. I found a great website that can help you prepare for the Daniel fast in terms of recipes and um, you know, what, what you can eat and, and what you want to avoid and, and um, you know, where we find it in scripture. And, and so we'll put that up there. Um, we're also going to uh, be, be doing more uh, of our personal devotions. I'll be posting some more devotions um, throughout the month. We're going to work to try to get to um, Bible study once a week for the month coming up. So we're going to, um, as opposed to going bi-weekly, we're going to try to do Bible study once a week for you. Uh, we're going to try to do a recharge uh, once a week for you as well to just really make sure that we are inundating, that we are putting as much godly content out there to help us and encourage us and keep us focused um, on what God is doing. And what I want to do is I want to hear from y'all as we go through this, I want to hear what is God saying to you as you're going through the fast week to week. If you get a revelation, you get some inspiration, God shows you something, God speaks to you, God gives you something. We want to hear from you. Messenger, uh, 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 send us a message through the Messenger uh, uh, app. Uh, hit us up on, uh, on the church's Facebook page. You can certainly contact me directly. You can contact Rachel directly as well. We want to hear from you and hear how this fast is growing your faith, bringing you closer to God, bringing you closer to one another. Uh, family, again, I appreciate you. A little bit different format, but it needed to be done. I want to set us up for success going into this fast. I want to set us up for the most successful experience that we can have. Ultimately, I need us to hear from God. I need us to hear from God as a church. I need us to hear from God um, as individuals. So I appreciate you hanging in there. Um, uh, uh, really looking forward to uh, 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 going through this, doing this together um, uh, uh, as a family, as a church. Um, uh, most gracious and eternal Father, Lord, I am so excited. Yes, excited to, to go into uh, this month of consecration, fasting, and prayer. I'm excited for what's going to happen in the month, and I'm excited for what's going to happen on the other side. I'm excited to hear the testimonies. I'm excited to hear the reports from your people of how they've grown, how they've grown close, drawn closer to you. I'm excited to hear about the revelation, about the, the, uh, the expressions of love that you pour into your people as we give up things of the natural and grow things of the spiritual. Father, I pray that you would continue to keep each and every one of us safe, keep our families safe, Bless us, God, as we travel along this way, listening for your voice and doing as you have called your people to do. In Jesus' name, family, bless you so much. Thank you once again for uh, uh, participating with us. We love you dearly. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay in this fight of faith. All right, fam, take care. God bless. Thank you.